I am here to discuss about examination of the posterior and anterior chest including inspection, palpation, percussion and Good auscultation. Morning. Good morning. My name is Swiddhi. May I know your name please? My name is Nagendra Devaji. Okay. I am here today to do your lung examination. Do you have any kind of pain anywhere at all? No. Do you have any question regarding examination? No. Okay, so we are going to proceed then. Understanding of thoracic landmarks is integral to the thoracic examination. I placed my finger in the hollow curve of supraesternal notch and slide my fingers downward about 5 cm until I feel the bony ridge that joins the manubrium to the body of sternum. Moved my fingers laterally and find the adjacent second rib and costal cartilage using two finger swab down the interspaces one space at a time on an oblique line. Find T12 and the adjacent 12th rib. I am pressing my fingers in and up from below the rib case, then walk up the interspaces above. Finding prominent spinous process, which is usually at C7, feel and count from C7 to T12. By eliciting the patient's concerns before the examination, I prepare for an examination that is efficient and productive. With the patient's health history in mind and after good hand hygiene, I am ready for the physical examination. I note the shape of the chest and how it moves. Thorax symmetry, any bony deformities, observe the rate, rhythm, depth and effort of breathing and listen for any audible sounds of breathing which may indicate respiratory distress. Listening and counting the number of breaths per minute. Normally a resting adult breathes easily, quietly and regularly about 14 to 20 times a minute. Now, I am palpating the sternal notch to check the position of the trachea. It should be in the midline. Checking the patient's color for circumoral and nail bed cyanosis, which is a bluish color arising from deoxygenation. Observing the chest for contour, symmetry and deformities, also inspecting the overlying skin, palpating the chest wall to locate any areas of pain or tenderness or any lesions or bruises, suspicious for rib fracture. For testing chest expansion, I am placing my thumbs close to the patient's spine at the level of the 10th ribs, spread it my fingers across lateral thorax. Asked my patient to inhale and exhale deeply and fully. I watched the divergence of my thumbs, which normally about 2 cm. To palpate for the tactile phrenitis, I asked my patient to say 99 over and over again until I say to stop. Feeling for the vibrations of the tactile phrenitis, I am using ball of my hand identified the areas of the increased, decreased or absent phrenitis. Here, percussing the chest in systematic manner, moving down to the thorax and going from side to side as demonstrated in a ladder pattern. Remember that only the distal interpharyngeal joint of pleximeter finger should be in contact with the chest wall to avoid damping out the percussion note. 
listening to the intensity pitch and duration of percussion notes using percussion to identify the lower level of the diaphragms using percussion to measure descent of the diaphragms or diaphragmatic excursion now i am going to auscultate auscultation is the most important examination technique for assessing air flow it involves listening to the sounds generated by breathing listening for any advances or added sounds and using diaphragm of the stethoscope to auscultate posterior thorax begin at the apices and proceed downward moving systematically from side to side again in a ladder pattern comparing breath sounds in symmetrical areas listening to the duration pitch and intensity of the inspiratory and expiratory sounds assessing transmitted voice sounds while auscultating the chest again ask the patient to say 99 normally sound through chest wall are muffled and indistinct louder sounds are called bronchophony test for egophony ask to patient say e normally i will hear a muffled long e sound if the underlying tissue is consolidated e sound changes to a and quality i ask the patient to whisper 1 2 3 whispered voice is usually heard faintly or indistinctly if clearer louder sounds suggest underlying consolidation patient should lie supine and breathe normally observing the condition of the skin and inspecting the chest for deformities asymmetry and respiratory movement palpating the chest to locate any areas of tenderness assessing chest expansion placed my thumbs along each costal margin with my hands asked patient to take a deep breath feeling for the extent and symmetry of the respiratory movement comparing both sides of the chest using ball of my hand phrenitis is usually decreased or absent percuss the anterior chest and lateral chest the heart usually produces an area of dullness to the left of the sternum from the third to the fifth interspaces as i percuss down the chest usually one of the left resonance of normal lung changes to the tympani of the gastric air bubble to auscultate anteriorly and laterally ask the patient to breathe with open mouth comparing symmetric areas of the lungs using the ladder pattern suggested extending it to adjacent areas listening to the breath sounds noting their intensity and identifying any variation from normal vascular breathing note that breathing sounds are usually louder in the upper anterior lung fields identify any advances sounds if advances sounds indicated for transmitted voice sounds ask patient to say 99